Georgia Southern football with Coach Paul Johnson. Brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Rosier Ford, Lincoln Mercury in Statesboro. The dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Our Gray Wireless. Private, powerful, perfectly clear. And Sea Island Bank. The better way to bank. Hi, everybody, and welcome into Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne, along with Coach Paul Johnson. And, Coach, the playoffs are here. No strange place for Georgia Southern. We've been here before, but a first-time meeting with McNeese State. Right, and uh, McNeese has a very storied football program, a lot of tradition. Uh, you know, the playoffs, uh, they're not strangers to the playoffs either, so it'll be an interesting matchup. Coach, the uh, off week comes at the end of our regular season, right before the playoffs, and uh, that kind of bodes well, especially this year being banged up. Well, we are banged up, and we're still banged up a little bit, but, uh, you know, I think that uh, what you have to do is take the guys who are healthy and, uh, you know, try to give them a plan that they can execute and go out and, uh, you know, play as well as we can see what happens. With the Thanksgiving holiday interrupting our routine, how has practice been this week? I thought practice was pretty good. I thought for the most part we were focused, and, uh, you know, we'll find out today. Certainly it's a lot different than during the regular season because you're, uh, you know, you have a lot of distractions, but... Uh, our guys have done it now for four years in a row, so hopefully we'll uh, have figured it out. After a month off, is Adrian ready to go today? I hope so. Uh, he had a good week of practice, and uh, we feel like he's full speed, and we're certainly going to turn him loose and find out. Weather looks like it might give us a break, and uh, does it matter one way or the other about the track today? Well, you'd like to have it you know, without rain, but if it rains, it rains on both teams, right. and you just have to deal with it. So. Uh, you know, we try to worry about things we can control, and we know we can't control that. All right. We'll be back with first-half highlights of this playoff game number one. But first, we'll take a look at this week's Coca-Cola Play of the Day. Everybody, welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Byrne, along with Coach Paul Johnson, and Coach, another first-round win for the Eagles in the playoffs. Well, but it wasn't easy. It was a heck of a football game. I think uh, you have to give McNeese State a lot of credit. They've uh, got a, a good football team and an outstanding program, and we're just happy to come out of here with a win. No doubt about that. We kick uh, off to them. They get the ball first and uh, start moving it down the field pretty well. Right. They put together some uh, a nice drive and got some first downs, and then. Uh, you know, we were able to come in and get a big stop on fourth down. And, uh, you know, what a great way to start the game for our defense. Then Georgia Southern gets the ball on the Georgia Southern 25. First play, J.R. Revere uh, gives a great fake to Peterson and then runs for 11 yards. Well, the first play we missed the block inside and uh, the down guy almost took the handoff and Jay was able to pull it out of there. That's why the fake was so good. He was able to pull it out of there and get around the edge for a uh, first down and then on the second play, uh, you know, we get the triple option, and Jay had a big play about 63 yards in the testing. Longest career run for J.R. Revere, and at two plays, 75 yards, took us all to 44 seconds, and it was then a 7-0 Georgia Southern lead, and it would be McNeese State getting the ball on the 20 as the kickoff went through the end zone, and uh, they would put together a couple of plays, one a big 42-yard pass play over the middle. Right, they hit us uh, on a post over the middle, a nice throw and catch, and you know, they were moving the ball uh, at will here, it seemed like, early on. And uh, once they got down there, though, we did manage to bow up and uh, stop them and make them have to come in and kick the field goal. It, they would go 63 yards in seven plays, capped off by a 34-yard field goal. And uh, they took three minutes and 33 seconds. That would make the score 7-3. Georgia Southern would then get the ball back. And uh, uh, on this drive, uh, after we started on our own 18, there was one big long pass play to Chris Johnson. It was incomplete. But he was wide open, and then we had to punt the ball. Well, Chris converted a, a route. We had an hour out call, and he converted deep and got behind him, and we just missed him a little bit, overthrew him just a shade. And McNeese State would get the ball then on the 30, and they'd come up with a couple of uh, plays, but David Young on defense almost had an interception on a play-action pass. Right. I think they uh, got us in a little bit of too deep there, and David didn't quite get over, and again, once again, they made a nice uh, throw and catch. Then with about two, old, about two minutes left to go in the first quarter, uh, they would rip off a 37-yard pass to Jimmy Redmond, 
and cap a 70 yard six play drive that took two and a half minutes and made the score then 10 to seven. Right and uh, you know once again they had uh, done a nice job possessing the ball moving it right down the field. Georgia Southern when they get the ball on the 24 and end up having to punt it in the early seconds of the second quarter. McNeese State would get the ball back and they also would uh, be three and out and have to punt. But then Georgia Southern would get the ball on the McNeese 48 and a play action pass to Chris Johnson. A 48 yard touchdown strike. Right. Uh, we had a little post to Chris Johnson off the triple fake and uh, Jay made a nice throw and uh, Chris ran a great route and it was a big play for you. Georgia Southern would then go up 14 10. And it would be McNeese State getting the ball back, and they could really do nothing with it with about 11.15 to go in the second quarter. They had to punt the ball over. And then uh, Georgia Southern would get the ball back on the 20, and uh, JR would get sacked uh, for about eight-yard loss and end up having to uh, punt the ball. But Shelton did a great job. A 57-yard punt really pinned him back. Right, Scott got off a nice punt. We got ourselves behind on that series a little bit on the first play because we ran a little counter option got the ball pitched to AP for what seemed like a big game but it was a forward uh, pass they called across the line so we lost uh, not only the down but a penalty and then we got a delay it was just uh, not a very good series for us. And then McNeese State would put together a really good drive eight up 523 went 74 yards and 13 plays and uh, they had a pass play for 12 yards and then a pitch play that went for 12 before they went on uh, on a uh, one yard run. Right and they they hit us on third down with a little reverse to the receiver and you know, it really looked like some of our guys were, were getting pulled down over there, but, uh, you know, nothing was called and they got it in the end zone. Georgia Southern would then get the ball back on the 29. First play of that series, uh, Adrian would go 12 yards and uh, really couldn't get much going on that drive with about a minute 56 to go in the half. Had to punt it away. McNeese would get it on the 8, and with about a minute 14 to go, they also would have to punt the ball away. And then Georgia Southern would get the ball on the 36. We have a big pass to Titus Johnson for 15 and a big pass to Chris Johnson for 13, but then on a kind of controversial fumble play. Well, what happened was, uh, you know, our defense did a nice job keeping them inside the 10. We used our timeouts and uh, got the ball back and we went in a one minute drill and hit a couple of nice plays. And, uh, you know, we had a play called and they gave us a, everybody up in the gaps and Jay checked the max protection and we turned the guy loose and he got sacked off the backside. Didn't see the guy coming and, uh, you know, I, whether he was down or not, I was called to fumble, and it was disappointing because we were in field goal range and we could have possibly tied the game up. 17-14 would be the halftime score as uh, McNeese would get one play and the half would come to an end. And uh, what was it uh, going into the locker room at halftime? Well, we just talked that we needed to play a little more intensity, and, you know, we made a couple minor adjustments. But it's like I told them, I mean, you, you got to block people and you got to tackle them. I mean, you can't just take a marker or chalk and draw up something magical on the board where you don't have to do that. And... Uh, you know, I think our guys came back out in the second half with uh, with some resolve. And we'll take a look at those second half highlights when we return after this time out on Georgia Southern Football 2000. Thanksgiving Day, but it was business as usual for the Georgia Southern Eagles Thursday as they celebrated the way they have the past four years in early morning practice, followed by turkey and trimmings at Landrum, and then it was off to home for some, while others visited various coaches' homes for dinner and, of course, a little football. And just what does it take to feed 15 hungry offensive linemen? Just ask their hostess, Robin Seawalk. About... Let's see, I guess four turkeys so far. I don't know whether that'll do the job. Lots of other goodies. Snookies has always been so generous to give us the tea. So thank you to Snookies and also to Vandy's because last year they gave us some barbecue. This year he helped me out by giving me um, some mashed potatoes. 
with this many big guys, they go through the mashed potatoes like it's going out of style. So that was a big help. I've been doing it for four years now um, with Coach Seawalk and his wife and other coaches and the players. Um, we enjoy this. And also I enjoy it because I like to eat. Uh, we've uh, done this every year since the coaching staff came in in 97. It's a lot of fun coming out here. You know, everybody's kind of relaxed and it's not like it is when you're out of practice and everything. And everybody gets to know each other a lot better. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. While it may be hard to be away from their families, most of the players choose to look at it as an opportunity to be with their other family. Sitting down and celebrating Thanksgiving, it's a day of thanks, you know, and turn and look at, you know, all your teammates. I mean, it just feels good, you know, you got them behind you. Know, when we go out there on Saturday and play, it's the same way. Yeah, I'd love to spend my last Thanksgiving with these guys. I mean, I know it's going to be a while before I see some of them again, or I might not even see some of them again. So, I mean, it's just extra special, you know, we get, get the, uh, Fellowship with each other, and I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. I mean, it just brings us closer together as a team and as a family. And while the eating may have taken some players' minds off Saturday's ball game, others use dinner as a motivational experience. I'm going to need it this weekend because uh, the guy I'm going against about 330 pounds. So, uh, yeah, I plan on eating a little extra turkey and stuff. Went in the halftime, you know, just realized what we were doing, and, you know, just messing up and, you know, got the board out and just, you know, drew up the plays and, you know, came out in the second half and everything worked for us. Uh, coach made a few adjustments and, uh, you know, we really got ourselves pumped up at halftime and came out here ready to go. Staying on blocks, getting blocked, knowing, we're, knowing the right guys that were supposed to block, and, and that pretty much was the difference between the second half and the first half. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Burner along with Coach Paul Johnson. And, Coach, we would get the kickoff to begin the second half. Right, and, uh, you know, we needed, I thought it was imperative that we put together a, a drive and try to get some of the momentum back. And, uh, you know, we knocked out a couple of first downs there and uh, we're driving the ball a little bit and came up with a fourth and four, I guess. I don't know exactly where it was. It was somewhere around midfield. And, uh, you know, we tried to draw them off sides and they didn't jump. And... Uh, Thought we had a play we could run and decided to go for it. And you call the team over, looked in their eyes. Apparently they said, let's go. And you give it to Weathers. He gets the first down and keeps that drive alive. And there's a big play action play to uh, Andre Weathers that goes for 21 yards. And then uh, the scoring play was the pitch to Weathers for 23 yards. Right. Uh, third and one, we had real short yardage and uh, hit the play action to, uh, to Andre. And a little better throw, he might have scored. But uh, we were going throwing it into a pretty good win. And we caught it, got it down there, and then we were able to run the trip and get the ball pitched. And uh, Andre made a nice run down the sidelines. I think Derek Owens got a nice block there. 75 yards and 12 plays, five minutes and three seconds. Put Georgia Southern up on top, 21-17. McNeese State would get the ball back, and the Cowboys couldn't do uh, a whole lot with it. And uh, they had to punt the ball, but they punted us deep. Georgia Southern had to start that drive on the two. Started on the two-yard line, and... Uh, you know, the first play, I think, AP hit, uh, we had ran the zone give, and Charles Clark and uh, Mike Anderson beat together, got some nice blocks for him. Popped him into the secondary and, uh, you know, got us out of jail a little bit. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, we managed to take that thing uh, 98 yards, and I think that was the real backbreak. 30-yard run on that run by Adrian, and then a 48-yard keeper by JR, which he bobbed and weaved his way down the field. And then scoring again on a pitch to Weathers on a 19-yard touchdown there. All right, once again, Andre did a nice job getting on the sideline and uh, getting that thing in the end zone. 98 yards, four plays, less than a minute. Gave Georgia Southern a 28-17 lead. Then it would be the Cowboys getting the ball on their 33. They really couldn't do a whole lot on uh, this drive and were forced to punt thanks to a good play by LeVar Rainey where they broke up the pass. Right, and I think uh, Basil Mack had a nice drop in zone coverage, and he also might have got a tip on the ball. And with about 57 seconds to go in the third quarter, Georgia Southern will get the ball on the 20. Uh, Adrian Peterson with a big, big 44-yard run. And then a pitch to Adrian we uh, to uh, Weathers for 14. And uh, then uh, it would be a pitch to Edmund Coley that would get us in the end zone. Right, uh, a little counter play, and uh, Jay did a nice job executing. Our guard pulled around, got a nice block, and it's good to see Edmund uh, get in the end zone. Edmund, I thought, played well today. He did some good things for us. 80 yards, nine plays, three minutes and 30 seconds gave Georgia Southern a 35-17 lead. The Cowboys would get the ball on the 28, 
and then early in the fourth quarter have to punt it away, but uh, they tried to run a draw play on that first play of that series, and Jamal Jones made a great tackle. Yeah, I think they ran a little counter tray where they pulled the guard and tackle backside, and, you know, Jamar went underneath and split them and played through the blocks and made a great play, and it was, it was great to see him do that. Georgia Southern would get the ball on the 29, but end up having to punt that away on that possession. The Cowboys would get it back on their 33, and then really, uh, thanks to a, a great uh, play by David Young, breaking up a pass, they went for it uh, with fourth and goal and threw an incomplete pass and turned the ball over to Georgia Southern on down. Right, and David made a great play on third down, I think, and, uh, you know, to, to get his hands on the ball. And, uh, you know, we, we stuck an extra linebacker in there on the first two downs and got a goal line, and they tried to run it and didn't quite get it in, and then we played uh, decent pass defense and kept him out of there. It was huge. Georgia Southern would get the ball on the two then, and uh, in this drive we would uh, get Adrian Peterson on a 53-yard run, which put him on 192 yards at that particular point in the game. And then Adrian would go in from 11 yards out, and that would give him over 200 yards rushing at that point in the game. Well, it was great to get Adrian back, and uh, he means so much, not just from a playing standpoint, but from leadership role. And, uh, you know, he's just fun to watch play, and it was uh, good to get him back out there. 98 yards, 10 plays, 4 minutes and 10 seconds, and that would put it at 42-17, Georgia Southern in the lead. And then... The Cowboys would get the ball back with about 2.04 left in the, the game, and uh, they would be able to do nothing with it and would end up having to punt the ball. Then Georgia Southern would get the ball on the 46, and you went to Andre Weathers at quarterback. Right, and Andre, I told him he's our uh, clock man. He's the guy who goes in and runs the clock out. But uh, we've been so beat up this year at every position that, uh, you know, most of the time a starter here is the second guy here. and. We wanted to get Jay and those guys out of the game. And Andre almost broke that thing. He came out of there on the option and, and spurred it out of there, and he was uh, really close to, to taking it in for another touchdown. 42-17 would be the final, and uh, we talk about coming into the game so beat up and having to kind of cross-train everybody and mix and match. How did we come out of this game? Well, we'll know in the morning. Hopefully, I don't think we had anybody seriously injured that we lost, but you, you don't ever know until Sunday morning, and, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know if we got... Uh, we might, there's a chance we might get Tommy LaRocco back and Chris Blunt, and we'll just have to see, uh, you know, when we go out there next week, see who we got available. Coach, it's always tough to draw a big crowd for this game right after Thanksgiving, and I know we'd like to have some more Eagle fans in the stands uh, for next week's playoff game. Well, we certainly would. We need them. Uh, you know, I thought the crowd that was here today was great. Uh, I understand, you know, with all our students gone and Thanksgiving break and the weather, but they missed a heck of a football game. I thought our guys really played hard. And uh, again, uh, waiting to see who we might have to play. And although we know now, it won't be maybe who some of the guys wanted to have a shot at. It won't be Furman, uh, but it, it will be Hofstra, who, the Flying Dutchman, who come in here next week. Right, and they got a very good football team. And, you know, we were the big thing is that we're playing. We didn't care who we played. Uh, we're one of only eight teams playing. And, uh, you know, we've got to get ready. It's almost similar to last year. You know, UMass went into Furman and beat them, and then right. they had to come here the next week. And, uh, you know, golly, it'd be nice if it'd work out the same way. All right. We'll talk a little bit about next week's opponent when we come back after this time out on Georgia Southern Football 2000. Back we are in Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Burner along with Coach Paul Johnson. And Coach, the Flying Dutchman fly in here next week. Right. Uh, you know, probably have played the toughest schedule of anybody in 1AA. And, uh, you know, they have uh, they really throw the ball around. We got to see them on tape against Elon. And they spread you out and throw it around. They got a little freshman running back that's awfully good. And, uh, you know, defensively, they must be uh, pretty solid if they go into Greenville and hold firm to 24 points. And that game was 24-17, uh, or 31-24 was the final, and it was really close all the way down to the end of that one. Well, it? sounds like, and uh, you don't go into Greenville and beat Furman unless you got a really good football team. No, not at all. Now you're, you're back on a, on a somewhat regular schedule, if you will, this week. That should help a little bit. Well, I think it will. Uh, you know, the one thing, you lose the extra day of preparation, but at least we do have a Hofstra tape. So... We'll have something to look at until we can get the others in and, uh, you know, try to get a game plan and get ready to go play. I know that uh, our guys usually look forward to uh, teams coming in from different part of the country, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, get ready to put our best foot forward. And we will have to do that, and certainly a, a good crowd next week at home, at home will be a big help, and the plus is we don't have to go on the road. Well, that is a big plus, and uh, hopefully we'll have a big crowd. Uh, 
we can certainly use them to get behind the team. I think that uh, once the crowd got with us today, our guys just really fed off that. All right, so we will have the highlights of next week's playoff game between the Flying Dutchman of Hofstra and the Eagles of Georgia Southern when we return on Georgia Southern Football 2000. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Ted Burns. See you next week.